I am back with a new food review. Radio Free Insmith episode 322. Back at you with another band from the Argoslento verse. The truth be told, this particular band has featured guys from all over the place. Because in addition to featuring contributions from Jean Chamat, the bassist of Argus Lent and Granville Isles Key, here playing under the pseudonym of the Flying Winged Demon of Necromancy. Boo! Haunted House! We've also got some guitar work from a man going by the pseudonym of Urinator of the Holy Graveyards. But his real name is Dennis Cornelius, and he played guitar in the classic... Maryland doom metal band Revelation, which means that you can actually do some wacky Six Degrees uh, Kevin Bacon type stuff and directly connect Bobby Leibling to the one and only Jalal Necrosotomy, which is kind of mind blowing. Oh man, you're not gonna do your lasso thing. Because you're no good with a rope. So, you know, you got the Revelation guy, you got the Argus Lent guy. They're around for the first album of this band. But the main guy that has kept this band going, the man whose brainchild this whole band idea, whatever is, is none other than deceased King Fowley. Ah! Now, if you're unfamiliar with Deceased, uh, I don't know really uh, what you're doing with your life. One of the greatest death metal bands of all time. Probably your favorite death metal band's favorite death metal band. Uh, I did an episode on them like four years ago that was uh, pretty exhaustive, so go and check that out if you're interested. But you take, you know, the Deceased guy and all of his ideas, mix it in with all of the Maryland doom metal stuff and whatever kind of Virginia-based wackiness Argus Slent and Grand Belial's Key are bringing, you get Doomstone, the band we're covering this week, which despite the band name, what that might lead you to believe, we're actually one of the foundational United States black metal bands that really doesn't get the credit that they deserve amongst the metal public nowadays. Part of that probably has to do with the heavy influence of heavy metal and, yes, appropriately enough, doom metal on this music. But I think a bigger part of it is that these guys don't just play, like, black metal. I would almost call it satanic panic metal. Like, this is some goofy stuff, specifically specifically designed to scare your elderly 97 year old granny. Well, yeah, it's satanic black metal, but there's not really too much in the way of ultra serious occultism or spiritual paganism or extreme political stuff. It's way less. I'm gonna tear that foreskin off with my teeth. And way more. His power is stronger than stronger. Yeah, His might shall last longer than longer. Yeah, Satan. Then their incidental association with Grand Belial's key might lead you to believe. A big part of that is probably due to King Fowley's love for rendering a lot of horror fiction in musical form, but also probably due to the fact that he's espoused his avowed hatred for Scandinavian black metal on many occasions, which, you know, is kind of... cringe in my estimation, but hey, you know, King Fowley's gonna do what King Fowley's gonna do, and it's not like he's gonna break into my house and smash up my Limbonic art box set, or at least I, I, I hope he's not gonna do that. Point is, he's got a different perspective on black metal than a lot of people do nowadays, and you take that different perspective, add in all that other stuff, all the other components from other bands, other band members bringing their own things to the equation, you get whatever weirdness Doomstone is supposed to be. And it is quite weird, especially on their first album. 1994 is Those Whom Satan Hath Joined, which, for what you might expect to be a very silly album, is actually quite abrasive. I mean, that intro is just all harsh, natural harmonics. These song intros and big build-ups are very important for the kind of horror movie atmosphere that Doomstone seeks to conjure. Also, check these vocals out. That's local scene legend. Jeff McClellan, performing under the name of Vomit. He used to run the Death Vomit zine way back in the day. He's done guest vocals for Morbius, Abominog, Grave Worm, in addition to Doomstone. Speaking of which, it's time for them to earn that doom in their name. Yeah, this shit gets real stonery at times. It's sort of a weird occult black metal sort of way. I haven't heard too much out there that sounds like this, like this particular blend of sound, particularly during the time period. There wasn't much that sounded like this at all. That heavy metal feeling, of course, enhanced by King Fowley's drumming. It's a, my and 
which much like Kaz Grant's jumping in the somewhat similar sound of Crucifier, is kind of doing a more death metal-y version of Bill Ward's material of Black Sabbath. And though he might not like the Scandi stuff so much, King Fally is pretty big on Master's Hammer, which you could hear in that prior riff set before we jump back into the more doom metal-y stuff. Doom metal-y and even rather psychedelic. Definitely a horror movie thing going on, particularly with the abundance of wacky songwriting choices like this interlude bit right here. Little bits of samples and light drumming and that bass drone. It's all very cinematic kind of music and how its ups and downs are constructed. And as the guitars come back in, we're hit with a distorted version of that bass riff, which sounds a little bit too evil to be written off as your standard southern sludge. Well, that's not very nice. Of course not! I'm f***ing evil! Particularly once they speed it up a little bit. There's all kinds of tempo shifts and interludes and weirdness all over the place. And I gotta say, I think a lot of that comes from King Fowley. He's a man that's as likely to name drop Emerson, Lake, and Palmer as an influence as he is Grim Reaper or Master's Hammer. And much like Master's Hammer and Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, these guys were not above enhancing the music with keyboards. And much like Grim Reaper, they got some wacky high-pitched clean vocals show up every so often. Very King Diamond at points. And the songwriting is also very merciful fate in terms of how all over the place it is. There's a big emphasis placed on narrative development. Each song is like an unfolding story kind of thing. Wait. Huh? Wait? It's his turn, Vegeta. I have to wait for him. <sighs> oh man, this part, this bit right here. Speaking of satanic panic metal, these guys are pretty much turning into an evil version of Trouble. And it is groove heavy as a motherfucker. Ultra catchy shit too. Coming up on another little mini tempo change sort of thing. This one giving King Fally another opportunity to show off his weird drumming style. Which, and I'm sure he would hate me for this, actually reminds me a lot of the kind of stuff that Fenris from Dark Throne would do in his more heavy metalish sort of moments. I get the feeling that King Fally and Fenris probably listen to a lot of the same bands that are influenced by a lot of the same stuff. Oh man, this song right here, this one's so fucking good. Christian Burial, probably the closest song on this album to just straight up sounding like Deceased. In fact, sounding like a prediction of where Deceased ended up going a few years after this album came out. And yet that guitar melody also gives off quite the Grand Belial's key vibe to me. And I would say the third band of the Doomstone Equation, that being Revelation, is present in these weird fucking change-ups like the one you just heard. Revelation was always a weird, proggy, kind of fucked up sort of band. Kind of like Confessor, except with way better fucking riffs. Damn! Anyways, this song hangs out in mid pace territory for a while before abruptly shifting pace. Getting real fast and almost kind of punky if it wasn't for how weird and proggy it is. And from there, they go into even stranger atmospheres, bringing back that sort of interlude approach from the first song. Getting almost kind of jazzy, prog rocky with it. And then they come back in super heavy with this absolutely crushing doom metal style that still maintains the weird scattershot off kilter feel. Again, it's another case of, like, best album you've never heard. Those Whom Satan Hath Joined. Nothing else quite sounds like this. And if you're ever getting bored with metal, you just put this on and you can see how creative the genre can get. Particularly on the epic closing track, which is also the title track. Let's check the opening track on the album. This one starts out with a almost ambient music guitar only kind of intro. Before gradually bringing in other instrumental elements drums slowly building up. This band's all about the build-ups, man. It's horror movie music, dude. And when it finishes building up, more of that great sort of evil trouble style riffage coming in. This real nasty groove influence type stuff leading us into probably the best riff set of the album. So fucking good, dude. Again, if you're into disease, Grand Belial's Key or any Maryland doom metal stuff and you're not listening to this album, you are missing the fuck out, man. Nothing else out there quite comes close to it in terms of the atmosphere it conjures. Or the kind of catchiness mixed with weirdness. Like, this is a weird fucking riff. This is some watchtower if they were a blackened doom metal band kind of 
rip. And yet it effortlessly transitions back into the more standard kind of groovy doom metal shit before finally returning to the song's roots for the ending, bringing in that ambient riff that started everything off. Incredible way to close the album out. Now my own personal copy of Doomstone's sorted discography is all on one CD. It's entitled Without Prayer, and it's got most of their first album and most of their second album with a bonus kind of cover bit thrown in the middle, bridging the gap. In this case, it's their cover of Acid's Prince of Hell and Fire, which is cool. But man, did you know the first album had a fucking Grim Reaper cover on it? I mean, come on. If you're going to put any cover songs on the compilation, it's got to be the Grim Reaper one. I mean, that just fits the satanic panic vibe perfectly. Said vibe absolutely continues with their second album. But that's also kind of one of the only things that's continuing on from the first album to the second. So, do they know what's going on with his name, or... Okay, yeah, they know. For this one, King Fowley's back, but pretty much the entire lineup from that first album. The Argus Lent guy, the Revelation guy, even the other guy that's still indeceased to this day besides King Fowley, they're all gone. And if that first Doomstone album is sort of like an under-recognized classic, even fans of that album seem to really hate the second Doomstone album. And it is somewhat different in style than the first one, so I can understand why people might not like it as much. It definitely feels a little bit more like a King Fowley solo album. Like, it says there's somebody on vocals named Priest Killer, but it just sounds like King Fowley doing vocals anyways. That said, I actually really like Satana Void, the second Doomstone album. And I don't care if I'm the only one that thinks it's cool. It's fucking if you want to talk like a fucking million, we'll send you to slip and fall school. Definitely just doesn't exist to be bonus tracks on a reissue of their first album. I mean, this shit comes in hot, dude. Check out these atmospheric fucking keyboards, the clean guitar type shit. You know what? I take it back. I don't understand how you could be into the first Doomstone album and hate this. This is quality stuff. It's got all that great horror movie build up intro type action that you had on the first album. Real, like, Razorback Records sort of atmosphere. Pulpy horror type stuff, but just a little bit more evil than that. Description would imply. And it's when those guitars really start to hit. You realize this is a pretty logical sequel to that first Boomstone album. Like, it sounds different, but it's a solid fucking follow-up, and it does not deserve the 19% rating it has on Metal Archives at the moment. And yeah, I guess this time around it leans a little bit harder on the heavy metal, but you gotta remember, this is right after Deceit's Supernatural Addiction. Speaking of the seas, there is no way you're gonna convince me that's not King Fowler on vocals. Sounds exactly fucking like him. I mean, whoever it is, they're doing a damn good job. I really like the sound of the vocals on this album. Check this shit out. fucking nasty dude it's not really black metal shrieky or death metal growly it's like if you took a death metal growl and somehow bent it into being melodic vocals but the vocal melodies themselves are these mocking almost sort of grand belial's key style guitar riff melodies twisted into being a vocal performance Certainly a more consonantly melodic sort of album, leaning a little bit heavier into the doomy melodic heavy metal side of the Doomstone equation. And yet it still has all those crazy narrative shifts that were such an important part of that first album. Again, really hard style to define. The best way I can describe this album is it's what a concerned parent in the 80s might have imagined heavy metal actually sounded like. Like just intensely and intentionally dirty and sleazy sounding and very satanic. Here comes another signature Doomstone speed up. And man, these lyrics are intensely fucked up even for Doomstone. Almost bordering on Wasp-style shock metal. Just in more of that black metal, doom metal sort of context. Intentional 80s horror schlock. But at least to my ears, it never gets too silly to the point where it becomes not very enjoyable. Like, it doesn't annoy me the way that some stuff from Ghoul or Blood Freak does. And like that classic first album, it's got one hell of an epic closing track. The delightfully titled Fall of Jerusalem. 
Starts off great with this little bass and drum groove before the fucking king himself shows up. This album is aggressively catchy, right down to how the vocal patterns intersect with the guitar riffs. It might be a little cornier in their first album, but even that first album was still keeping fucking Iowa in business, the amount of corny shit on it. Personally, I dig it. I think it's nice. I don't care what Brett Stevens says. Also, the guitar playing in this part is really fucking sick. It's really Manila Road sounding. All that whammy bar, echoey, reverbed out dive bomb shit. Little incorporation of fuller bar chords. Building up to a massive fucking doom metal collapse. This shit turns into a fucking swan track, at least for a little bit. But if there was parts of that first album that sounded like an evil satanic version of Trouble, there's a lot on this album that sounds like an evil satanic version of fucking Saint Vitus. At their most self-titled album sounding ultra minimalist or at least it does until they go into the really weird psychedelic shit which definitely returns from the first album in an even weirder form like pretty much the entire second half of this track is all just this weird psychedelic section switching back and forth with the heavier shit check out this change up right here That's some heavy, groovy, gnarly fucking shit right there. And then it goes into an even more like bonkers kind of fucking section, tilting back towards psychedelia. Just a real weird fucking album, but a really fucking good one. I like it a whole lot. I like the first one a whole lot too. I love both the Doomstone albums. Never seen pretty much anybody ever talk about these guys at all, especially nowadays. It seems to be a forgotten chapter of heavy metal history. I mean, I think I got that Without Prayer compilation off of Amazon for like 99 cents back in the day. Hopkins, I found it in a cracker jack. And my weekend's real busy this time around, so I needed a quick and dirty episode on a band that I know a whole lot about and not a lot of other people do. Just thought it'd be fun to share this band with you, because especially if you're into the Seas or older school doom metal or even Crucifier, or Grand Blast, Key Argus Lent style stuff, I think there's a lot of things to enjoy here. Hopefully you agree, but even if you didn't, thanks for listening or watching or whatever you did. I'll see you next time. Damn, my green screen is getting slutty. I don't know if I should try and fix it or not.